Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now I don't know about y'all but I have been waiting for years for a proper armoured Killmonger figure and that's exactly what we have right here, made by none other than Young Rich Toys. Now I did get mine from Comic Sanctorum. Do bear in mind though, this is a third party unlicensed unofficial product. I have popped the link in the description below, but this is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down in the description, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art. Now at this point, let's be honest, we're no stranger to Young Rich Toys. They've made some figures that range from truly exceptional to truly mediocre. I'm hoping this guy is on the good end of the spectrum. Up front and centre, an image of Killmonger plus the third party name down below. Young Rich Toys on the side and then a massive logo that's the Killmonger mask on the back of the box. Now interestingly enough, they have gone all out with this release. He doesn't just come with the armoured outfit, he comes with the civilian look and a fully customized body with the scars. Now you do have another slipcover that does have an image of Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger and then the figure himself. Up front you do have the extra outfit pieces and then below him an additional foam block housing the rest of the accessories. First in-hand impressions for Killmonger though uh, that he is relatively heavy. This guy is on a massive body. We'll discuss that more a little bit later on. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the display base first, it's simple yet it's done in the usual young rich toy style. It's circular, Eric Killmonger etched into a metal nameplate and then the Killmonger helmet up top. Plus you do get a regular crotch grabber. Something that I absolutely wasn't expecting is that he comes with the secondary outfit for the museum heist. You do get a blue denim jacket with some wear and tear in the high traffic areas and a few sections where it very clearly has been torn and shredded. You do have some faux fur lining the collar and the inside. You do get a white t-shirt to go under that and then a pair of black cargo pants. These pockets are real and working. Don't worry, you will see this outfit on the figure a little bit later on. To go along with that outfit, you do get some additional accessories. Starting off with the sling for his rifle. It's got a real metal clasp and real metal rings that actually peg on to the rifle itself. You do get a real metal chain that holds his Wakandan ring. Now it does have a teeny tiny amount of sculpted in detail on the surface, the ring itself is made of plastic. You then get a bunch of necklaces with some very big teeth. Don't worry, once again, just like that outfit, we will be popping all of this stuff on the figure. To complete that look, these might just be some of my favourite accessories here. You get some 1-6 scale Timberlands, this time in black. There's some sculpted in texture on the surface, you've got the stitching around the edges, the laces up front, plus the eyelets are painted in a nice shiny silver. Underneath a Timberland logo plus some fully sculpted in treads and a Timberland logo on the outside for both boots. Now my only complaint here is that they are very clean. Just like the jacket, I would have liked to have seen a little bit of wear and tear to show some signs of age. But at the end of the day, yeah, I still really like these boots. Now let's be totally honest, Young Rich Toys doesn't have the best track record when it comes to 1-6 scale head sculpts based off actual people. 
This time, though, I think they've done a commendable job. I can see the likeness to Michael B. Jordan from pretty much every angle. The skin texture and the paint applications are very good. Now, comparing it to the Hot Toys sculpt, I still think the Hot Toys one takes the win. But do let me know which of these two sculpts you prefer down in the comments below. I do also, though, have this third-party very angry expression Killmonger, and I'm tempted to try out this sculpt on the body as well. But this head sculpt isn't just good because it looks good, it also has a party piece. If you remove the top hairpiece, you can bring in some additional attachments, such as his fringe, and then the hair that's tied up on top. You peg it in place, and now you have a completely different looking sculpt. This is something that I never thought I'd see in 1-6 scale, but it's very impressive. Now, you can bring in the real metal framed glasses and have him wear them. Now, you do have to be careful because, as I said, they are metal, so you might do some damage to the sculpt if you press them on too firmly. Now, I do like the way they sit, although they are a little high on the bridge of his nose. I don't think I'm ever going to have this figure displayed in the museum heist look, but if I was going to, yeah, these glasses are definitely an important part of that outfit. You do also get the mask that he stole and then subsequently wore in the military-style armour. Now, it does have some proper fur around the edges, and it's painted really nicely. There are multiple layers at play, you've got some green undertones and some brown highlights, and you have a proper stretchy elastic strap around the back. Meaning, yeah, this can absolutely be popped on that head sculpt. Now, in order to do that, I wouldn't be surprised if first you have to remove all of the hair pieces, so there's nothing that sticks up and protrudes underneath this mask. As for weaponry, you do get two guns. Starting off with the 1911 first, it's very simple. You have a moving slide up top and a removable magazine with unfortunately no bullet detail painted on the top there. Now, it is just cast in black plastic and it's completely unpainted. This is a bare bones pistol, but it does get the job done if you're just going to pop it in his holster. Now, as for the larger rifle, I love the way this looks. It's big, it's bulky, you've got the grenade launcher down below, a massive scope up top, and a real working extending stock. Now, you can't actually remove the magazine or open or move anything else, it's just like the pistol, quite bare bones. But at the very least, it is an interesting sculpt with multiple different attachments. Most of these smaller accessories are just there to complete the look. Now, you do get five of these larger magazines that unfortunately can't be used with the rifle. That drum magazine you saw just before is permanently attached. Now, you do get a very bright chrome silver carabiner. Three very bright chrome silver magazines for the 1911, and once again, you guessed it, a bright chrome silver combat knife. They do also give you one grenade for his grenade launcher, and two that are the more traditional round shape. Lastly, you also get a wristwatch. We have seen this kind of thing before, it literally just slides over the wrist peg, and there is some detail printed onto the face. Then lastly, you do get a full array of 1-6 scale hands. The skin texture and the paint applications do look really good. Now, usually with third-party figures, we get those nasty, glossy, waxy hands. Well, I'm pleased to report that Young Rich Toys pulled out all the stops and decided to include some very high-quality hands. What we are going to do now, though, is get Killmonger himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him, standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Although I do have him with all the smaller bits and pieces installed onto the outfit, just to complete the look. And now that that look is completed, yeah, I'm one very happy collector. That doesn't mean this guy is perfect, but I have been waiting for years for this particular look for Killmonger to be made in 1-6 scale. 
and young rich toys, you'll have delivered the goods. I've already discussed the head sculpt, I absolutely love it, both in terms of likeness and in terms of the gimmicks. The outfit hugs the body in all the right places, it's suitably vibrant and suitably visually interesting. There is a lot to look at from head to toe. The only one complaint that I think I currently have, more may be discovered later, is the body. It's ever so slightly too big, both in terms of bulk and height. When we start to do some comparisons, I think it's going to become a lot more apparent. Now I know, Michael B. Jordan is a massive ripped dude, but I don't think even he is as big as this particular figure is portraying him as. What we are going to do now though, is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now in just a second we will be trying out the museum heist look and the shirtless option, cause I'm pretty darn curious to see what they've done under this stretchy blue shirt. Now starting off with the head sculpt, you'll know I love it. It sits at pretty much the perfect height to expose a little of the neck, even though the collar on the vest is a little bit larger. You do have a proper working zip down the front so you can unzip it to remove all of the various layers. Now these armor plates do peg together, do be careful, these pegs seem a little bit more fragile. Now apparently Michael B. Jordan is a Dragon Ball fan, and this outfit was influenced by Vegeta. Now I don't know if there's any truth to those rumors, but if there is, it makes me like this outfit even more. I mean, you can kind of see it, right? This is the Saiyan armor, you've got the straps over the top and the stretchy blue shirt underneath. Now, my only complaint about the armor is the way it's painted. It's sculpted really nicely, it's made of this very sturdy rubbery plastic, but it doesn't look all that metallic. I was expecting a little bit of a shine, maybe some pitting and weathering, but it is just a matte gunmetal finish. You do, however, have multiple different fabric sections. They've got different patterns and different colors, and it comes together beautifully. Now, coming down to the belts, you do have spots to install the grenades, the gun, the knife, and everything else. Plus the walkie-talkie that I forgot to mention in the accessory segment. But yes, he does come with a walkie-talkie. Now the belts do sit a little bit loose, as you can see, so they do like to flop around. So too does the pistol, it doesn't really clip in place, it kind of just floats around in the holster. I wish that was slightly more secure. Then coming down to the pants, it is an asymmetrical design with the holster on one side storing some magazines and nothing on the other. You do have some ripples and pleats and some knee pads plus some real working pockets and of course they are camo print. And I think they tie the look together very nicely. The blue stretchy shirt and the camo pants do play off each other very well. Coming down to the boots, Unfortunately, these are not a split cut boot design. That means you aren't really going to get any range whatsoever. At the very least though, they are nicely sculpted and painted, plus you do have some weathering on the toes and also underneath on the soles. As compared to the rest of the outfit, that is very clean. But for those wondering what he looks like in some of the other looks, now I knew the body was fully sculpted underneath, but I had no idea how good this was going to look. Now don't get me wrong, you can fully see the exposed joints, so this is going to turn off some of you immediately. But for me, I could still totally see myself rocking this in the collection. Now is it just me, or do his hands look ever so slightly too small for the body? When you're up close or you have him in some dynamic poses, it's not a huge issue, but when they're just sitting there, that is something that I've noticed. Now around the back you do have all of the scar details plus all of the raised dots, and they extend all the way around the front and down the arms. Now I also have noticed a very subtle skin tone mismatch between the head sculpt and the body. It's not something that's super obvious, and it isn't something that's going to stop me from using this in the collection, but it is something that I have picked up on. 
Other than that though, yeah, this look is very unique and it's going to stand out in the collection. Lastly, we have the Museum Heist look. Now, this is my personal least favourite. Not because I dislike the look in the movie, or because I dislike the pieces individually, I just don't love how they fit on the body. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, you all already know how I feel. I love these interchangeable hair pieces. Moving down, you do have the necklaces, which are a little bulky, so they do make his neck look ever so slightly shorter. Underneath that, a very tight-fitting white t-shirt, which is good because you can see all of that awesome sculpted in detail and scarring underneath. Now, my biggest issue with this outfit is the jacket. I like the way it looks separately to the body, but it's far too small. It literally looks like a child-sized jacket on a full adult-sized body. I don't exactly know what they were thinking. Now, coming down to the pants, they are literally just some stretchy black cargo pants. They do have elastic around the top, so you can adjust them if you want them sitting higher or lower, and once again, those real working pockets from earlier. I do also now have him wearing his watch, which nicely disguises that wrist peg. Then, of course, down below, he's got his Timberlands. I have no complaints with these, and because they are sitting a little bit lower than his combat boots, you now do get some articulation down here for the ankles. But I am curious, which of the three looks do you prefer? Let me know down below. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Hot Toys Black Panther. And as you can see, Killmonger is huge. In my opinion, he's completely out of scale. Now, yes, this could work if you do want Killmonger to be this big, imposing presence in the display, but for me, he's just a little bit too large. I am tempted, even though this body is really nicely detailed underneath the outfit, to still swap out the body for something a little bit shorter, because posing him up alongside T'Challa here, yeah, it looks a little bit weird. And I guess the same thing can be said for the fully suited figure. As you can see, he is shorter than himself. That's not really supposed to be the case. I understand he's wearing military boots, he might be ever so slightly taller, but nothing this drastic. Now, I'm still okay with displaying the armored Killmonger in the collection, but having him right up alongside the fully suited version, yeah, that's probably something I'm going to avoid. Just going over articulation. Now, bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a double ball pick, looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms are on some very sturdy ratchets going up to there, going forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down, a single bend at the elbow that incorporates a swivel, and of course a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. Now the torso only has one joint because it is fully sculpted, and that's of course down at the waist, crunching forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee that does get you just past 90, and then of course a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Although the boots are one fixed solid piece, so you're not going to get any range. Just wrapping up on the Eric Killmonger by Young Rich Toys. Now going into this, I was really excited because I've been waiting for this outfit for a very long time, as I've said a couple of times now. But at the same time, I had a voice in the back of my head saying, Justin, how good can this actually be? What I mean by saying that is, we all know Young Rich Toys. They've done a great job with the animated figures, they are truly exceptional. But when it comes to translating a real person and actor's likeness into 1-6 scale, yeah, that's when they tend to struggle. It seems though that this guy might be the turning point. Finally, Young Rich Toys have hit their stride. I don't just like this head sculpt, I love it. 
The paint applications, the likeness, the expression, the interchangeable hair pieces, that's just icing on the cake. Plus, you do have a fully wearable mask. Then we move down to the outfit. There is a lot to love here. The vibrant blue for the shirt, the multiple different armor plates that clip together, and all of the little accessories that can be stored in and around the outfit. Underneath all of that, though, you have a fully custom sculpted body with the scarring. So if you wanted to have a very unique look in the display, ditch all of the armor, have him shirtless, and have him battling T'Challa. Plus, they do include a third option, which is the museum heist look. Something that I wasn't expecting here, but yeah, I'm very glad to see it. So at the end of the day, Young Rich Toys delivered. I've got my eye on you, Young Rich. Fingers crossed you keep doing just that. Now, I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. Do bear in mind this is a third-party, unlicensed, unofficial product. I've popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down in the description, why not check out that join button next to the subscribe icon. If you hit that, you'll get some more information on Justin's Collection Plus and Justin's Collection Plus Max, the channel memberships. If you do want to get your name featured in the end credits of the video, that's where you have to look. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.